You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And you know, we may not be doing that much politics today. We will be doing a lot of pol public policy because we have an unusual guest. We have John Russell, who's, he, look, he's just a financier. I love saying that word, financier. Would that be correct, John? That's correct, but okay, it sounds but good. You do know the world of finance intimately. I mean, you've been with Citigroup, right? Yes. Solomon Brothers. Yes. You've been dealing with institutional bond sales. Right. You know, you now deal with bringing money into relative value partners. I mean, you bring in all that money so you and other people who, what's that word? Well, Tom Wolf, what was that thing? Masters Bond, of the Universe. Master of the Universe, yeah, yes. Yeah, so that's what you are. You're, you guys are masters of the universe where nobody else understands what happened in, in 2008. John explained it to me just very simply, so there's just seven factors. But we're not going to talk about this. What we want to know is why John Russell, okay, bon vivant, man about town from Oneka, is involved in Inglewood. You're going out there and you've got these opportunity scholarships. And just yesterday, we're taping the show on August, um, August 12th. It's a really meaningful day to me. We'll get into that some other time. But for you, it was one day after you gave out 15 opportunity scholarships worth I think I think the press thinks it's forty thousand, but it's really worth forty-five thousand each. Could right? be forty-five. Yes. Nine times five, five thousand dollars. These kids who won this lottery, they can take that five thousand dollars for the night for next nine years. That's forty-five k, and they can go to the school of their choice. This is like a school voucher program, but it's funded by private entrepreneurs or private individuals, right? That's correct. not by government. And that's what you want to do. You want to, we'll talk about this guy, Milton Friedman, Capitalism and Freedom, who, you know, in 1960, 1955, what was that? That would be 57 years ago, came up with school vouchers, I think the first. Right. Maybe somebody had it before. He wrote this book in, in 62, so we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the book. We're celebrating the 100th birthday on July 31st of Milton Friedman. So you'll see this, if you can see it in the background, we'll show you in a second. Uh, this thing called The Power of One, celebrating the life and vision of Milton Friedman. Hard to read it there, but trust me, that's what it says. And that was all July 31st. So this is, it's all coming together, you know, I mean, right? I mean, opportunity scholarships, it's the wave of the future. You're going to be able to persuade, look, five, the city of Chicago schools, they spend $15,000 per kid per year. For $5,000, you are saying you can get a quality education in the city of Chicago, in Inglewood, right? That's correct. Is that magical? I mean, how can you do that for 5,000 when the city of Chicago spends 15,000 per kid per year and doesn't give them a quality education? Well, I, I, most of the schools that these recipients will choose, their tuition ranges between 3,000 and $7,000. And so the cost of education may be slightly higher at these schools, but this will get them in and not incur cost to them personally. So we want the kids to have the right to choose. We want people from disadvantaged neighborhoods to have the right to go to the school that their parents think will best serve their needs. So these folks who applied to your lottery, yes. there were requirements. What were right. they? The main requirement was that they were eligible for a free lunch program within CPS or a reduced lunch program. Which means what in terms of family? That would say, uh, a family of four who made 42000 or less would be eligible. Okay. And then it would be thirty-five for a family of three in the high 20s for a family of two. Now, somebody might say to you, John, don't you have anything better to do with your time? Because all you're doing is helping 15 kids, right? 15 kids a year. There are 400,000 students. Some would say 360,000. See, one of the interesting things in the city of Chicago, they don't know how many kids are in school. I mean, it's like a moving target, right? I mean, some people tell me 360,000, some say 400,000. I think it's 405 is what the number I saw. 405. Four hundred four. All right, so 405,000 students, and you would agree probably, most people say at least half are in failing schools, right? I would agree with that. And maybe even failing themselves. So 200,000 kids are sort of in trouble by going to that. And you take 15 kids, 
and you say, well, how many kids were in the lottery could partic participate in your lottery? We had over 200 applications. From I parents, 220, basically. Yes. 220 applications for 15 slots. It's a drop in the bucket. I mean, you know, it's nice to do that, but why not just sit at home and write a check? I mean, you're going out there and raising money, and you got what? Are you fully funded? Are you like the state employee pensions? You know, are you got, you got an underfunding problem? Because do you have all? If, do you have the money for these kids going forward for the next 13 years, or do you only have a portion of it? Well, we're, we only go through eighth grade. Okay. Oh. That's what we, uh, right, that's what we. So, okay, that, excuse me, so it's yes. not 13 years, nine, that's why I said that, right? right. K through eight, kindergarten right. through eight. And so, some are first graders. So, so when this kid wins the lottery, it's 45,000. For each kid that you called up and said you won the lottery, do you actually have the 45,000 going forward, or are you sort of, a, is it on the come, as they say? I would say we're 70% funded. 70%? Yes. Okay. So we will be able to pay right now, if nothing happened, we would be able to pay for four years, roughly, of their education. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to garner a lot more support in the interim. But So 15 times 45, that's roughly $600,000 yes. plus, right? Yes. And you've got in the bank maybe 400000 right? Yes. In the bank are pledges. And so again, I come to you, like, wh why do this? I mean, it's nice. You help 15 kids. But what about the other, other 200000 that you're not helping? What do you, what do you say? I mean. You know, there are people who are against vouchers, and they say, oh, well, you can't help everybody, so let's not help anybody. I mean, really, I think Barack Obama might actually say that. On his show in 2002, he said he would do anything to help the kids that would make the education better. And then a year later, when he was running for the U.S. Senate, a declared candidate in the Democratic primary, he said, as you know, Jeff, I'm for charter schools, but not vouchers. And I said, no, I don't know that, because just a year ago, you told me something different. But now he would say that, right? He, he gutted the Washington, D.C. program. He and, Arnie, well, he's he and to. Arnie Duncan basically went to D.C. and said, these opportunity scholarships, we don't want to do things that doesn't help everybody. So although some kids have escaped the failing schools in D.C., not everybody did. So wasn't that their rationale for cutting out the whole program? Or I, was it just that they wanted to please the teachers' unions? I mean, I don't want to be too cynical here. I don't know the rationale, but I know it's seen wrong. There's been studies done. There was a study done by the Department of Education in 2010 that proved that those kids that were accepted in the lottery in D.C. performed 10 percent better. In other words, if you think about it in grading, they got a 90. The kids that were left behind got an 80. And there was a, a pool of applicants, so it's from the same pool that they compared. So the kids went from getting the opportunity to escape the D.C. public schools performed better. Right. Even though you could say the parents were equally motivated because they, all parents were coming here and saying, we want a chance to get out of these schools, well, not everybody did. So you're controlling for that. Because sometimes people say, oh, kids at charter schools or kids at voucher schools do better because they have more motivated parents. What you're saying is the study said so That was no. a gold standard study. Yeah. So they, we got the same pool of applicants. Okay. They, they came from the same backgrounds. And, the, the Department of Education has said that they did better. Now, there's other studies surrounding that program that come to the same conclusion, but people can always say different studies are manipulated in ways. But it's very difficult to believe that those that obtained the scholarships in Washington did poorly. Okay. They didn't. I mean, they did They well. did better, absolutely. And they, and they all were thrilled to participate, and they all were very angry when they were told that by Obama, by Arnie Duncan. Think of this here. I mean, we'd love for Arnie Duncan to come out just once. We tried to get him in when he was CEO of the Chicago Public Schools. We never could. And then some would say he was just afraid to face this, you know. You see, right now, if he goes on Channel 2, 5, and 7 when he was here in Chicago, right. they just they lob up these, oh, gigantic softballs, okay? As people say, was Bernie Goldberg talks about the mainstream media has this slobbering love affair with Barack Obama, right? Well, if they had a slobbering love affair with, the, with Barack Obama, with Arne Duncan, I'd say the mainstream media here had like a hundred love affairs with Arne Duncan. So once we wanted Arne to come here and answer a few questions on vouchers, we couldn't. And then he goes to D.C. and he destroys a, a, a program that's helping low-income kids. And I would say to Arnie, if Arnie was here, 
why did you want to take something away that was helping kids? If you care a damn, if you care at all about low-income minority kids, how could you do that? What do you think Arnie would say? I don't know what he would say, but I found it interesting that he was a superintendent of schools in Chicago and the, the achievement gap between minority students and white students. Now, in, in the city of Chicago, I believe 40 to 45 percent are African Americans, 40 to 45 are Hispanic, and roughly 10 are uh, Caucasian. So the achievement gap under him between the African Americans and the other students widened um, over while he the was last, there, while for he was six there, years. unequivocally. And, and he was rewarded by Barack Obama and made Secretary of Education. It's very There's difficult. In the business called the Peter Principle, how they sort of promote people. Is it the Peter Principle? You promote people who are doing poorly and put them up, up, kick them upstairs, right? Well, I felt for Arnie Duncan when he was a superintendent, he did the equivalent of jumping over a stick on the ground and everyone applauded for him. Yeah, but now, so, but you still haven't answered my question. What's the point here? Because okay. if you're only helping 15 kids, I mean, even you, look, it's good to help 15. But that, that, that can't make you happy when you lie down, put your head on the pillow at night and say, oh boy, for the next year we've helped 15 kids. Well, our organization, Freedom to Learn Illinois, was formed to be advocates for parental choice for Illinois families. We have a very simple goal, a very simple mission. We believe that every family in Illinois, with an emphasis on low-income and poor families, d deserve the right to determine the best education for their children. So it's very simple. Now, in, in the Illinois... How do, I just interrupt you to say, well, how do people find that? What's your website? It's www.freedomtolearnil.org. Okay, and so they go there, they can find you easily. Yes. If they want to find you or people who work with you on this. Right. Because, you know, you're during the day, you're still making money at Relative Value Partners, right? Well, it's amazing how much time I spent this summer on, on this on particular this. issue. Okay, yes. so they go to the website, they yes. can contact you. If right. you see people wanted to get involved in supporting this program, you'd welcome them, right? Absolutely. Because you We're need looking money. for allies. We're trying to build a coalition. But I interrupted you. So that's how they find you. But what is it you're doing here? You, once a year, you give out 15 opportunity scholarships. But your, your goals are a little broader, a little larger, right? Absolutely. What is it you're doing here? Well, what happened is the school choice movement in Illinois has been always a very difficult movement and it never got much traction until Reverend Meeks came along and raised the, elevated the issue very, very strongly. And then all of a sudden it didn't pass for various reasons. Who's Reverend Meeks for those who may not Reverend know? Reverend Meeks is the pastor and a state senator from, for, he's a pastor of Salem Baptist Church on the south side and he was a state senator representing the Roseland area. Which was a relatively low income area. Yes. He was a Democrat and then an independent, right? But he I kind believe of voted, he's a Democrat. He, vote, he voted with the Democrats, but right. he think he called himself an independent. And he came up with this program, legislation, which was a limited school voucher program. I would call it a failing voucher, failing vo school voucher program. In other words, it was giving vouchers to kids who were in the lowest decile of performance. And their the schools were, schools. yes. Their schools. schools were, yes. In the lowest decile, all those kids in those low-performing schools would be eligible for, I think it was a $6,000 voucher. Uh, it was 3000 It was a small amount. Well, I yeah, thought it was, it was 6, a 32. Are you sure? I, I'm I was pretty, pretty sure, sure yes. it was 6000 I would dis disagree with you on that. Uh, because the reason why, well... The problem with that yeah. bill, it was widespread and it helped kids, but it didn't have enough funding for students. But it didn't students. It only pass the Senate, yes. which is where Meeks was. Right. It didn't pass the state right. house, right? That's right. And it had disproportionate support from Republicans relative to Democrats. I, you know, it was surprising that it wasn't like a lemming vote where everyone voted along the it party. It wasn't, but, but, but yeah, you still had more Republicans were voting, at least in the Senate, I believe, well, were voting disproportionately to their numbers for it. But you had a number of Republicans who didn't support that's, that. That's right. Both in the House and the Senate. It was very right? discouraging in that right. regard. But, uh, but a number of black liberals and even some white liberals who generally were hostile to vouchers, I got to say, did support it that's in the state correct, Senate, yes. right? Well, maybe and they, and maybe they were embarrassed either. not to support right. somebody who was a colleague of theirs in the so called right. black caucus. Right. Okay. All right. So that failed. And of course, the numbers you're saying it was only three thousand. I'm saying it's only six thousand, right. um, and it's also addressed a small number of students because they're 
many more. I think that would have been like 20 or 30,000 students. That's right, students. 20, 20 plus thousand. We would say there are probably 200,000 or so in failing schools who right. would benefit from a school voucher program. Maybe they all would benefit, but these 200,000 would benefit enormously. Right. Because they're not learning how to read now, they're not learning how to do math, how to write at grade level, they're way below grade level. You know, at Nutrier, we'd benefit from a new, I, I think, people watching this know about Nutrier High School. We'd benefit if we had competition for Nutrier High School. We do have some. We were talking before the show, right? There are some That's parochial right. schools in the area. There's right. North, North Shore Country Day School, I guess. Didn't sound right. Is that the name? Yeah. That's the name, yes. But nevertheless, there are a lot of people, they don't, even in North Shore, even in New Trier, don't have really that alternative. They're paying substantial property taxes. They view that as their payment to education. They can't take that money, that 20000 or more that we're spending on their kid, and go to the school of choice. If they could, there'd be many more private schools for them to choose from. They could choose from Loyola Academy. They could choose from North Shore. And then what people don't understand, once this purchasing power is released, they could choose. But I, I don't, Let's go I, back to your right, initial yeah, question. Yeah, not a lot of tears for Nutria because those kids are learning how to read. The secret is they're learning how to read mostly at home from their parents. But anyway, but the, the initial main, question the main benefit is what are we coming? trying to do yeah, at Freedom yeah. to Learn Illinois? Yeah. And why did we start with this Opportunity Scholarship? We started because it's difficult to go out and ask business leaders in Chicago to advocate for school choice. And there are a lot of leaders who want school choice, but they would look at me and say, John, you know, you're Don Quixote on a donkey with a toothpick. And this has never worked in, in Illinois. We're going down the path of charters only. That seems to be working. That's what we're going to get behind. I've been behind that issue for 20 plus years, starting in the mid 80s, and it's gone nowhere. So I would say, what about money for a scholarship program? They go, oh, that's interesting. And, and we got some support in that regard. Now, we're gonna use this at a minimum, the Opportunity Scholarship helps kids and allows us to get into communities and schools that would benefit from it and to rally around the issue. Okay, even those schools are, if you just call them and say, can we come down here and talk to you about school choice? They're, they would say okay, but if you call, in addition, we we're gonna give you a chance to win a scholarship for eight years, then they really got behind the issue. The okay. school did. The school and the community but you're, but surrounding. But you're, you're pulling the kids out of their school. Why do they get behind them? Well, no, no. We, we went to schools. Which schools that are the, we talking about? I mean, the schools that benefited from these scholarships, the private schools, we went to them oh, and they okay. went out they, into the community. These are the schools they're going to go to. Yes, gonna, exactly. Because they, they get to choose, but you're betting they'll choose right. to take these scholarships to these private schools. And now the private schools are interested because right. now new customers are coming. Exactly. So, so our benefit was... At a minimum, 15 kids get a better, a better education. They obviously they came. They already get a will get a free education, but the parents are willing to to uh, change the direction and get a, a, a free education <laughs> via the choice program. And if you can document that they improved relative to their peers who didn't win this right. lottery, then you've got research. So if you can get professors at universities who are interested in studying this, you've got fresh data for them. And then the legislators can look at this and say, wow, they're, per they're outperforming charter schools. Because you have experiments like this in DC. Right. I don't know if the data, All over the country, if the data yeah, has been yeah. studied in Cleveland, right? right. Illinois, is, Illinois is a backward state. There's, there's no way really to get around that. Because there was this revolution called the Reagan Revolution. We're flyover country. Really, we are. They say, oh, Iowa's? No. We're flyover because, in a sense, the Reagan Revolution flew over Illinois, right? That, yes. We got Jim Thompson. The rest of the country got Ronald Reagan. I mean, Thompson's a nice guy, but Thompson is not a Ronald Reagan Republican, right? I, I believe that, yes. Okay. The rest of the country got, the rest of the world got Milton Friedman. We got Milton Friedman at the University of Chicago. Then he went to the Hoover Institution. The ideas of Milton Friedman... We, we missed him. Rahm Emanuel, he can't stand school vouchers. He says he loves charter schools. And you ask him to explain it, I can show you the tape. It's, it's, it's in, incomprehensible. It's a guy babbling, OK? Because there's no way you can say, oh, charter schools are good because there's competition. But school vouchers is a false choice. So well, Rahm, we invite Rahm. I think they've taken me off their media list, OK? Really, I used to get to invite so I could know go to press conference. 
But now Ram, because he wussed out, okay? Can we say that word? I guess so. Because he's, he was fighting for a longer school day, and he wanted it to be used for instruction in math and reading and so forth. And the union said, no, no, if you're going to have a longer day, we'd like to say control how that day is used for almost anything but instruction, okay? So we have these teachers. We'd like you to hire them for another $50 million. I don't want those teachers. We'd like you to hire them. And what did Ram do? Okay, the longer day will be used for music, for culture, for, you know, naval disarmament, you know, studying your naval. Really. And, the fi and these 500 teachers will be rehired, even though they're not specialists in art, music, and so forth. So Ram whisked out, right? He, he whisked out, yes. He whisked out. But I want to go back to the opportunity okay. scholarships. Okay, so it also will hopefully will serve as a catalyst uh, and a template for a voucher program and a catalyst to get for senior business leaders and politicians to rally around something. Okay, this is just the beginning. It's a difficult issue. It's like uh, promoting school choice in Illinois is like paying a long par four with the wind in your face. It's not easy right now, but someone has to do it. So that's what our group is trying are to do. Are you getting anywhere with the Republican Party? I mean, are there, any, are there any Republicans who are calling you up and say, John, let me help you out. This is really great what you're doing. The funniest thing is there was a representative from the west side, long from the, lo a long ways from where we were holding the lottery, who called a Democratic representative and said, I want to get this out to my constituents. So that is the help. Now, if you're only given 15, we didn't need right. a thousand people showing up. But, you know, that would be out of control. Right. But you got some so help from a Democrat. We, it's funny. That's who, yeah. who called me. Yes, and, and we didn't solicit the I mean, politicians. Like Kirk Dillard. He's a guy who ran for governor. He wants to run for governor again. Kirk watches this show, so he'll see this. So I'm asking you, Kirk. Have you? Do you know John Russell? Do you know Kirk Dillard? I don't know him. He's no. a state senator. I'm, I'm aware of who he is, but I don't personally. But know him. I, I'm sure Kirk's going to be calling you now because I'm giving a shout out to Kirk. And Bill Brady, he's done this show numerous yes. times. You know, he ran for governor. Right. He was the Republican nominee. Has Brady got in touch with you? He is not. He is. But Bill, I'm sure is going to be. Your phone's going to be ringing off the hook as soon as this thing airs. So Brady well, let me tell you, the school Dillard. choice advocates. Wait, wait, there's one guy, Dan Rutherford. He's now the state treasurer. He's like one of the six state constitutional officers. He believes in the free market. Has Rutherford contacted you? No. Oh, well, Dan, we haven't heard back from you about being on the show. Skip that. We don't need you on the show. Give John Russell a call and see what you can do as state treasurer. Maybe there's something he could do. Well, he could probably save money if he had a choice program. That's yeah. been proven uh, in every state that's been enacted. He's got, a, he's got access to a lot of dough. I mean, doesn't he? He's a state treasurer. All right, so I'm being a little bit facetious, but I really do think Rutherford and, and Brady and, um, and Dillard should call, and anybody else. I mean, there are other guys who want to run for governor, and they want to improve the quality of education, and they believe in competition, and they say this is the Republican ethos. Here's an idea. Hey, Mitt Romney's running for president. And who did he just pick today on August 12th? August 11th, yesterday, Paul Ryan. Was it yesterday? I thought yes. it was announced yes. this morning. Yes. Paul Ryan. He's from Janesville, which isn't far in Wisconsin right. from here. <clears throat> so, Paul, give John Russell a call. Mitt, <clears throat> Mitt I, <clears throat> I can call him Mitt and, and, and Paul. Give Russell a call. You guys collaborate. And Here's an idea. How much time we have? Give me a minute. Okay. I, I know it's your show. I mean, it's right. about you. But let's get an instant reaction to this. We just got this idea. So these battleground states, the 10 or 12, right? That's going to decide the election. Don't you want something, Mitt and Paul, Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan? Now, we're not partisan. We'd say this, look, I've said this for Barack. He did six shows here and he became president. You're done one. I'm you're, ready. You're yes, ready. I'm ready. You're to on go. your way. Move. So seriously, Mitt and Paul, give John a call and say, because there are 12 battleground states or so, if you can notch up the minority vote from maybe 10% for you guys to 13%, you'd win, right? And so in those battleground states, there are like Pennsylvania's one, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, large inner city populations, right? African American minority. Supposedly, school vouchers. You're telling me very. They've popular all worked with those on minorities. programs and they either have enacted or have other programs in process. Uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana enacted one of the widespread so uh, Mitt, school choice. The thing is, Mitt and Paul run on school vouchers, run on school choice, visit those states, gin up that vote. But it's not just a matter of politics. You become president and vice president, but also the kids then have a school voucher, school choice program. 
So instead of Barack Obama and Arne Duncan gutting a program as they did in D.C., Romney and Ryan bring hope, growth, opportunity to minority kids, and they win the election. You heard it first here, August 12th. There's certainly a, a lack of hope in the uh, community like Inglewood. Matter of fact, on the, uh, the day we gave the scholarships away yesterday, within uh, 12 hours of giving them out, there were six shootings within a few blocks of where wow. we were. So the, the, we want Is to that related? Hope. Are those shootings related to not having a decent basic education, do you think? Well, most people in, that attend the public schools in those areas fall behind by the time they're in third grade. They're weeding way below average. And by the time they get to eighth grade, they're barely they prepared drop out. for high so school. Half the kids do not graduate, right. right? Well, in that community, if you looked at it's Wenger much, much and Rosa, it's, 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 it's 60 percent don't 60. graduate. And of the kids in the Chicago public schools who do graduate, only one in, only six in 100, only six percent finish in six years of four-year college program, right? I think male uh, minorities, it's, it's if mid single kid, digit. If I'm a kid in those areas, I say, the hell with this. I'm looking for the closest gang. Sign me up. I'm not playing this game, right? right? If you don't do that, you're not a smart person. That's the little game. People do marches and all this ridiculous crap. If you want to march for something, okay, if you've just seen somebody slain in your area, get off your ass and start figuring out how you help John Russell, right? Well, we would appreciate all the help we can have, yes. Don't do a march. Get your kid to get a quality education. Give them choice, give them competition, give them school vouchers, and they'll go away from the gangs. Yesterday, when we were, right before we were awarded I guess say, we're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but we only have a few minutes left, and I very much want to thank our guest, John Russell. I've been a little facetious here, but one thing. You meet a guy like John Russell, and I just met him on the, uh, I was attending as a media member, the the dinner in honor of Milton Friedman, his 100th birthday. So John and I, we just met there, right? That's right. Okay. I learned you doing this, this opportunity scholarship thing. We put him on. This man is really focused. You can help 15 kids. You can save 15 lives. I was being facetious. You do that, you're a saint. Thank you so much, John Russell, for coming on the show. Thank you, Bruce. You folks, Jeff. where do you go again? What Go website? to www.freedomtolearnil.org. And they can find you there. They can give you a call anytime. You live in Winneka. You're in the book. We want to do more than opportunity scholarships. We want to promote, as a public policy, the right for every family to choose the education that best serves them, with a very high emphasis on the low-income families mm -hmm. who really don't have the opportunity. They go to essentially failure factors. This, this is our goal. And as I told you, I want to conclude by saying, mm -hmm. I told you yesterday that, uh, or the, the people at the lottery yesterday, our goal isn't to just give 15 scholarships out. Our goal is for everyone in here, everyone who came here and many across the city to have the opportunity to attend, to attend the school they would you like. You want 400,000 students in the Chicago Public Schools to have the choice of leaving that school, taking their 15,000, which we're spending now, right. and going to the school of their choice. You want 400,000 and five. You said 5,000 students? That would be a victory. That would be, you right. could sleep I think it night. would transform Chicago. It would transform the educational right. end. And that's it would give, hope to, to it would give hope, hope to people. I hope Ron Manuel's watching this because he wants Chicago to be the idea city. Eric Zorn, who's a very bright guy and a great Chicago Tribune columnist, but he says to me, well, Jeff, the Chicago, if you had vouchers, he just thinks the Chicago public schools would fall apart. Now, what that's say, not what true. do you say to Eric Zorn? Well, I would say if you looked at the Milwaukee program, which is the oldest program in uh, America, it's been going over 20 years. What's happened there is that both the public schools and the private schools have done better. So the graduation rate for people who stay behind and didn't get has so gone from 50 to 70. Apart. So Eric, now and the funding, by the way, for well, what per study student. would you refer him to? Is there a specific study of the Milwaukee School Voucher Program? There are a lot of studies on that okay. program, but there are independent studies. If you go to School Choice Wisconsin. They will lead you to many, many studies. And there's this book here by Herb Wahlberg on school choice yes, studies the findings advocate. across right. the country. Yes.